Welcome back to the GTN show. Yeah, welcome as the dust settles on the Olympic Games. And we have some bad news in the world of triathlon as Thomas Rodriguez, Ironman Texas winner, has failed an anti-doping control. Yeah, we also discussed the sad events from the CrossFit Games this weekend, which involved an athlete passing away during the swim. And we look ahead to the stacked field at the Ironman European Champs this weekend in Frankfurt. It's our birthday! Not my birthday or Mark's birthday. GTN's birthday, and we are seven years old. <laughs> a little bit emotional, actually. <laughs> oh, you get to bat the candles in, Mark. Do I? Yeah, happy on. birthday oh. to GTN. Happy birthday to GTN. Carry go. Okay, okay. Yeah, all right. Cool. Let's we not, just eat this Let's thing. not draw this up too much. Yeah. Uh, let's get to react first, and then we'll eat the cake. All right, starting with this one uh, from the Marathon Swimmers. Now, a lot Ooh. have been said about the water in the Seine. Yeah, we, we, won't, we won't come up, bring you know, that beat, back up. We won't beat that drum anymore. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, some of the marathon swimmers did get sick. Oh yeah, I mean, if you think 10,000 meters of swimming in the Seine. Um, well, they were also any... drinking in the Seine. Like they were taking those bottles yeah. with big open mouths and going, uh, um, But yeah, so uh, Leonie <laughs> Beck, um, one of the swimmers who actually was probably a contender for the medals. Unfortunately, she didn't have quite the race she was after. Uh, finished in the top 10, I believe, but she vomited nine times the day after yeah. the event. Um, um, uh, and also, you know, was quite open and saying she had diarrhea as well. And also, <laughs> she had a photo of scratches all over her arms. Because, oh, yeah, I watched some that? of it. They yeah. would swim right against the bank. Because obviously, like the triathlon, strong currents. They're trying to avoid the currents as much as possible, get as close to the edge as possible. But they were like brambles hanging right down into the water. Wow. And yeah, they kept hitting their arms on them. And it was like five, six laps, I think they did, where they went past the brambles. It tough yeah. back into that, that current. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah, she wasn't alone. Um, her along with two other German open water swimmers and also, I believe, a Hungarian. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. And a few other triathletes also got sick. Not surprisingly. Anyway, we put all that behind us. It was a yeah. pretty successful Olympic Games. I'd say so. Yeah. Um, and one that really stood out to me in terms of performances, um, Georgia Bell, who actually is a duathlete as well as a 1500 meter runner. I'd say she's a 1500 meter runner who's <laughs> yeah. done duathlon in the past more accurately these days. I'd, I'd say she was always a 1500 meter runner that dabbled with duathlon and <laughs> just happened to do but it But we are claiming well. her in the multi-sport world because yeah, very impressive performance. Yeah, I mean, she so she won gold at the 2023 World Duathlon Champs for the 30 to 34 age group. Um, but yeah, she's gone on to um, claim a medal in the 1500 meters. So um, very, very impressive and um, well done to her. Yeah, very impressive race there. Uh, and then Safan Hassan, we have to mention this because we talk about running records occasionally and yeah, absolutely crazy. And did you see a kick in the final oh, uh, I did, yeah. few meters of there? I mean, yeah. when you saw the three of them sort of coming towards the finish, like, oh, I think I know who might have the better kick here. Well, yeah, you would think so unless you've run 62 kilometers in the last week this is true <laughs> <laughs> she still had it two bronzes and a gold which is probably a record in the three distance events that will never be beaten yeah. in the history of the olympics i don't think absolutely yeah. mind-blowing no. um, anyway uh, back to triathlon and some very exciting news eric Lagstrom and paula fiddley got married yeah congratulations, congratulations. Yeah, very, very nice. Yeah. Um, and then back to Olympics, um, oh, okay. because yeah, we, we can't leave that for too long. Um, I saw this over oh, the weekend, I thought on. this was hilarious. A uh, quarter of Britons reckon that they could qualify for the 2028 Olympic Games if they start training tomorrow. Try to say that with a straight face. Come on, one in four Britons. I love the armchair, <laughs> the armchair critics, like, I could do that. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, and even breaks it down percentage-wise into the sort of sports that people think that they could qualify qualify for so obviously the 10 meter air rifle seems to come out on top with 15 percent um any others oh it's the mm. easiest one is it oh yeah road racing road race cycling um six percent 100 meter sprint <laughs> six percent think they could run the 100 meter sprint in a one under 10 second triathlon also <laughs> makes it in there four percent of uh, Britons think that they could qualify for the triathlon if they started training tomorrow interesting the same percentage think they can qualify for the football no. Um, yeah. <laughs> wow. I, I actually, I read I read a bit on the study, and uh, it was a 
I think percentage wise, mostly the younger audience that are very kind of confident and optimistic in their well, abilities. I'll tell you what, um, LA 2028 is going to be fire. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, but that is it for the Olympics. I have absolutely loved it. Now we just await the Paralympics, which oh, yeah. are going to start at the end of this month. And actually, the Para Tri events will be taking place over the 1st and 2nd of September. In the same? <laughs> Now on to the Tri News and the big topic this week, Thomas Rodriguez, who made a name for himself earlier this year by beating two-time Ironman world champion Patrick Langer when he won Ironman Texas in April of this year. Well, he has been pinged for a anti-doping violation. Yeah, his sample was collected in competition, which means immediately after that Ironman Texas result. Uh, and they found what's called clomiphene in it, which is a hormone modulator, hormone uh, and metabolic modulator. It's actually used for female infertility, mm. uh, but it can be used in males to stimulate their testosterone production and therefore it is banned in competition in any uh, amount. Uh, so it's prohibited in all competition by WADA, which I mean is a signatory. Now the ITA that actually performed these tests and been working with Ironman since 2023 found that the A sample failed that test. Thomas then requested that the B sample be tested and surprise, surprise, that also failed. He has since now challenged these results. Yeah, so he's been provisionally suspended while that challenge is ongoing. He hasn't been banned outright or given that four year ban, which he's supposed to get for a positive test just yet while the appeals process runs its course. However, he is provisionally suspended, so you won't see him at any races for a while. He did put out a very long post on his Instagram trying to explain the situation. He says he's a ambassador for clean sport. Uh, he also says he tested positive for clomiphene and he wants to be clear and transparent about the situation. He says the presence of clomiphene in the system is due to the inadvertent consumption of contaminated food, specifically chicken and eggs, which are abundant in my diet. These foods contain traces of the substance leading to the unexpected positive result. Which, I mean, it does make you go, well, how does he know that? Because I didn't know that until I started Googling it. Uh, and how does he already know that he ate lots of those things and therefore that's why it's in his system? I mean, probably because he did the same thing as you. He Googled it. He Googled it. <laughs> How can I explain this away? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, anyway, he says he's uh, dedicated his life to sports and always competed with integrity and honesty and would never betray his principles. Uh, you know, but also he's associated with people well, who are associated with yeah, I mean, his coach actually is linked with, I think it's two or three other athletes that have already been suspended or banned. So one being Mexican pro cyclist Villabobos, who uh, was caught with human growth hormone. There's other Mexican mountain biker, Yulola, Yulola, sorry, um, and he actually failed his whereabouts three times. Um, and this is his coach that he's working with. Yeah. Um, you're probably wondering why we're, we're so skeptical about all of this. Obviously, with his result, it was very out of the blue. I think a lot of the triathlon world at the time were uh, a little suspicious. Yeah, we actually had results. this discussion last week about how prevalent it might be, doping might be in the triathlon community in general because we had that age group uh, uh, sample or whatever it is, a, a survey which said that up to 11% of age groupers were doping. And it was obviously a discussion about how prevalent it is. And then obviously this comes out and it can be seen as proof that it is even more prevalent than we wanted it to believe because now there's another positive test in the pro ranks. However, if you cast your mind back over the last year or two, there's a handful of performances out there that you look at and go, whoa, mm. that one came out of left field. Where did that performance come from? Who is that guy and where did that come from? And one of them was Colin Chartier winning the US Open in the T100, who has since been banned. And another one was... Thomas Hernandez Rodriguez, who also was like, whoa, he just outran Patrick Langer. Where did that come from? And now we get this result. And you then you kind of think, actually, in that instance, maybe the anti-doping system is working pretty well because the outstanding performances that really make you raise your eyebrows are the ones that are also being caught. Yeah, and actually you saw that in the reaction from a lot of the pro athletes. They were kind of applauding this because... I think everyone, as I say, suspected it and they were very thankful to see that action was happening. Yeah, unfortunately, you watched that result with Thomas Rodriguez and a lot of the pros probably did and went, whoa, hold on, someone needs to say something. But you can't say anything until there is a positive test. And now it's come out and then everyone's going, yeah, I mean, 
thank goodness they caught him because it was so obvious to all of us. It's a very difficult situation for pro sport and for professional triathletes in general because you can't say anything until you have evidence mm. and you can't get evidence until they target that those people who are suspicious. So, yeah, but it is good that they are catching people yeah, and, cheating. And I did actually see that WADA have already done kind of investigations into clomiphene and it's where it is found in food. And actually, I believe they have a method of working out whether oh, yeah, the traces are in food or they've been found in egg or not. And so um, I, I'm hoping yeah, we something will happens get some to it when it goes through a chicken and an egg that yeah. turn that means they can actually if they've got a big enough sample there's enough of it in the urine they can test for whether this has been through a chicken or through an egg and then been ingested or whether it's been uh, injected into a into a human being directly and uh, yeah hopefully they are able to actually test his sample to prove that one way or the other uh, and potentially even clear his name if that is the case. But let's be honest, mm. it's probably not the case. Yeah, um, if you would like to find out more about drug testing or the anti-doping sort of procedure, we actually do have a video coming on the channel very soon where um, the anti-doping uh, guys turned up at my house to do a test. Uh, so that was very interesting. We filmed it all, um, so stay tuned because that is coming later this week. Yeah, the results are still pending on Mark's test. <laughs> uh, moving on, uh, there is some sad news in the CrossFit world. So yeah, we actually had the CrossFit Games this last week in Fort Worth and they had an interesting event that took on a three and a half mile run into an 800 meter swim and unfortunately one of the athletes passed away during the swim of that and it was 28 year old Serbian Lazar Dukic. Um, and it's believed that sort of in the late stages of that swim, I think about 50 meters before the finish line, he got into some trouble and then the emergency uh, respondents just didn't see in time or quick, or respond quickly enough. And um, unfortunately in that time he passed away, although the cause of the death is unknown at the time of filming this show. Um, but yeah, really tough. And I know that CrossFit Games are under a little bit of scrutiny around all of this and the kind of the logistics of sort of sending runners straight into a lake swim after you know heart rates being up in the 180s 190s but yeah as i say unknown yeah. at the moment condolences to his family and the entire crossfit games community there and moving on and super try is back after a very short break off the olympic mm -hmm. games uh this weekend uh they're going to be in boston and there's a new team too the brownlee racing team which is run by the brownies jonathan and alistair John johnny is actually going to be an athlete manager and an athlete. So I think he's Love gonna, it. gonna put himself in, in, the, uh, in the team. Uh, and uh, they've got, there's multiple teams obviously. One of them is a Bahrain 13 team uh, called Crown Racing. There's also Podium Racing Team, Stars and Stripes Racing. Uh, it's the Boston this weekend and then the following weekend, the Chicago Triathlon has also got a Super Tri now. Super Tri having taken over both of those uh, events. Then another one in September in London in October in Toulouse in France, and then the final in Neom in Saudi Arabia in November. Uh, an absolutely star-studded lineup. It it's really is. quite impressive. Uh, the Brownlee team, for example, has got Beth Potter, Johnny Brownlee, obviously, Alex Yee, Jess Learmonth, uh, Olivia Matthias. Uh, on the Crown Racing, the Bahrain team, Cassandra Bugan, Georgia Taylor-Brown, Kate War, Hayden Wilde, Vincent Louis, and Max Stapley, and I think that's my favourite team, to be honest. I can't, <laughs> see, them. I can't see them beating that team. I, yeah, that is a pretty strong <laughs> team. Although the other team, I mean, you, they're, they're very good. You've got Jeanne Leher and Leo Berger on the, I mean, we can go on all day, yeah. but this, I think it's going to be a great race. exciting racing, yeah. So tune in for that this weekend. On to what the tech, um, as always with the Olympics, there's lots of nice fancy tech floating around. So we've um, picked out a few of them. For first off, um, Koros sent me through this clip of Alex Yee's bike compute to the new Koros Dura, and they've done a custom colorway to match All his matchy, bike. matchy, oh. It's quite good looking, isn't it? It's nice. Um, also, forgive our, I guess, our biased interest in Team GB, uh, but <laughs> did you notice the athletics kits? I there? thought it looked pretty cool. Yeah, um, so they had almost like, like these zebra stripes over them, and this wasn't just for aesthetics, there was actually some kind of science and testing behind this. Um, it's all from a company called Rion. Um, apparently it's born out of NASA and then has actually been developed for the last 15 years with Imperial College in London. 
And the result is this energy absorbing super polymer. So those stripes you see is basically this polymer. Um, now this polymer could be used in all sort of different ways in just everyday life. It's uh, basically, I guess, like a vibration and noise cancelling uh, purpose as well. Um, but in this instance in running, it can reduce that vibration of the muscles. So if you think a foot hitting the floor, the polymer stiffens up and reduces that muscle vibration. So it's soft and flexible like a fabric yeah. in normal state, but then when a force is applied, it stiffens up. Yeah. Like that non-Newtonian liquid, that corn flour mix that you make for your kids and they... If you... Sort of like yeah. that. Or like flubber. I made clothes out of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sounds cool. Uh, so if you smash your clothes on the ground, they're going to suddenly go stiff. Well, it has been used, I've seen also in some other cycling uh, products or is in development. So I guess, yeah, things like, I guess, protection for mountain biking or things like that could be really interesting. So watch the space, but yeah, very interesting. High tech, yeah. yeah. I also thought it was interesting, coming from a triathlon background, we've seen these a lot. Those omeous headbands, oh, yeah. the cooling headbands. They kind of increase the surface area of your skin. Yeah, they've got little dots on them and everyone was like, well, what are those? Because the marathon runners were wearing them at the Olympic Games. But I guess marathons normally happen in like really cool weather, so they wouldn't really need a need, have a need for these. Except for every four years when it's the Summer Olympics, they can't move it to winter and they can't move it from the location. So you yeah. end up having a really hot marathon and all the marathon runners go crazy. I remember the last Olympic Games where you saw the British runner collapsing because of the heat and yeah, I guess. You do, you do forget that, yeah, marathon or elite marathon runners, often the race, the key races are kind of early part of the year or later in the year. Um, cool. Whereas in triathlon, yeah. we're just going, I think oh, no, what you race forget, midday in yeah, Hawaii. Yeah, I think what you forget is that how ridiculous racing at midday a marathon in Hawaii uh. in 32 plus degrees is. Yeah. It's it's crazy. But yeah, I did see the forums and sort of like social media going, what on earth is on those runners' heads? Oh, but yeah, wow. it's like commonplace in triathlon, isn't it? Yeah, um, exactly. Anyway, um, also another thing I spotted on social media, um, this from Arcturix. Um, did you spot this? I haven't seen this. Okay, An so... Exoskeleton. Yeah, so they, um, Arcturix have teamed up with a kind of startup called Skip, which actually was born out of Google X. Um, and essentially, yeah, it's kind of a support for hiking that's built into the trousers. It's called MO Go, uh, short for Mountain Goat. Hmm. And the idea is to make hiking more accessible by reducing sort of physical strain. And they believe it could take around 13 kilograms off your weight when running. Um, but it's very kind of bionic looking, isn't it? Even with like the LEDs sort of lighting up on the side. It's, those uh, are definitely going to be banned in triathlon. <laughs> Don't think you can use those for your race. Well, I did see some people commenting, could you use this in cycling? Uh, <laughs> it's like an e-bike but attached to you. Uh, they, they, I think well, that's a no. <laughs> it costs you about the equivalent of an e-bike, four and a half thousand dollars. Um, so yeah, um, don't come in that yeah. cheap necessarily. Um, final thing I wanted to discuss, not necessarily tech, but you know something very, um, very keen on. Sean Conway and his I'm 105 um, book that he's just released. He sent this through to me. Um, and yeah, super guy, um, but also of note at the moment because Jonas Dijkman is, I guess, attempting to break his record. But what's quite cool is Sean is- come and take the sticker yeah, off. Take the yeah, sticker off. world record, record sticker <laughs> off. But what, what, is quite, 10 days? <laughs> what is quite cool is Sean is really open to helping these other athletes. And I know he gets on very well, Jonas, and has helped him with some of the kind of like tips and um, logistics advice because it is an absolute mammoth of an undertaking. Yeah, it is. Um, we have been following Jonas Dijkman since I was out there in Roth and saw him on his 60th day. He's now on, day 95, so 10 more days before he breaks Sean Conway's record, uh, but 25 more days until he's uh, finished. 25 more for wow, Iron Distance Track. But yeah, if you would like to find out about that Iron 105, the whole kind of, what it took, the logistics, the team behind it, um, I've yet to read this myself, but I'd imagine knowing Sean, this will be a super read, so you can get this on Amazon, so go check it out. All right, now time for our race news. Only one race to speak of uh, this past weekend, and it was the Xterra European Champs, which was won on the women's side by Luanne Duvisson, with Annette Grabmuller coming second, and Elisie Patisse coming yeah. third. Uh, on the men's side, it was Arthur Siriez that took the win ahead of Felix Forizier, and then Jens Imelslof Nilsson in third. Um, yeah, that's a course that I did last year. It is rather punchy. 
It's a very nice course. Um, but yeah, this weekend we one. have the Ironman European Champs uh, for the men um, in Frankfurt. Yeah, men's only race this one. But 88 men on the start list. <laughs> yeah, stacked. It's a pro series race, of course. Uh, and Christian Brunfeldt is actually, well, he's top of tri ratings list of favourites, obviously, on his uh, kind of rating of his previous Ironmans. I think probably two weeks between uh, the Olympic Games and a full Ironman is pushing it even for Christian Blumenfeld. Oh, I was going to say, I wouldn't put it past him. I mean, technically, <laughs> all he has to do is get around and complete the Ironman to get his Yeah, he's an automatic qualifier, quite qualifier, so he just has to validate. So maybe he won't be leaving it all out there to win, but an absolutely stacked field behind him. Uh, Patrick Langer, Max Newman, who does need to qualify. Uh, so we'll see how, what kind of form he's in. Uh, Trevor Foley, who's been, Mignon. Trevor Foley has been racing tons, hasn't yeah. he? I mean, that would be interesting. But also been on form, so yeah, he might be the man to watch. Uh, yeah, an absolutely stacked field there. Uh, should be some very exciting racing in Frankfurt. Also, there's a women's only Ironman happening, Ironman Kalmar in Sweden. Uh, much smaller field, uh, not part of the Pro Series, uh, but uh, a women's only race happening in a separate place this weekend. <laughs> to try spy um guess the athlete last week we gave you this photo of a very chiseled jaw wasn't mark webber <laughs> no it wasn't mark webber the f1 <laughs> driver um it was richard murray um we got some of you uh, so we had hansen handsome from someone uh kyle smith but yeah quite rightly we had a few of you also guessing richard murray yeah niv from and got richard murray and peter holmes also richard murray so a couple got that what do we have for this week mark we have this one! <laughs> you think I've done? I've gone too easy. Too week. easy. I actually think that the, this image is easier to tell than the actual full image, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you think you can tell who that is, leave a comment down below. Tell us, try us by, and who you think it is, uh, and we'll read out your name next week. Say what? Okay, loads of great comments last week under our AliExpress Super Shoe video. Um, if you haven't checked it out already, do go and not have so a look super at. shoes. Yeah, um, it seems um, many of you actually were very familiar with the shoes that we bought in from AliExpress here. Now, for context, the cheapest shoes we bought were twelve pounds. Then the slightly more expensive shoes were around forty pounds. Needless to say, the cheapest shoes were pants. Uh, the forty pound <laughs> shoes were actually surprisingly good, and a lot of you, as I say, commented having kind of had experience of these shoes. Um, running Man run, Runny Man Running said, just FYI, One Mix, which were the more expensive shoes, is a real, if pretty rubbish brand, but the second pair is an obvious knockoff of the Future 1.5 from 30, uh, 361 degrees. Um, so one's a real budget shoe and one's a fake of a very much non-budget shoe. Oh, so we should get the 361 shoe then. Uh, and get that over here and yeah. see uh, and test it. And a lot of people actually commented in with other suggestions on the shoes from like a Brazilian brand, another brand in China, that these are quite affordable carbon shoes um, and actually fairly decent. So we might have a bit of a series going on here, James. Well, yeah, I think you probably can get some decent, really good shoes for a lot less than the £260 that some of the top brands are charging. Uh, so yeah, maybe we do need to delve a little bit deeper into this. And actually following on, um, in the video with the one mix, the yellow shoes, the £40 shoes, we actually falsely said maybe these are illegal shoes because there's a double carbon plate. Actually, after oh, yeah. closer inspection... And by closer inspection, we mean more cutting them up. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't a carbon plate after all. It was just like a rubber strip that covered yeah. up kind of one of the air pockets. So in fact, they are legal. So. I can race in them after all. Well, not that particular pair. No, we'll have to buy some they're in more. A bit of a bit of a no. false economy, really, <laughs> isn't it? Uh, anyway, that is it for the show this week. As I say, we've got a great video coming up on the anti-doping procedure, uh, so do check that out. Yeah, we've also got another video coming up where our partner Koros, who is also a partner with the Olympic gold medal winning Alex Yee, sent us some of Alex Yee's workouts, and you can see where this is going. Mm. So if you'd like to see not only what Alex Yee did in the lead up to the Olympic Games in some of his workouts, but also see me and James suffer in those workouts. <laughs> yeah. Coming yes. soon.